There's a thin line between heroism and madness. Here the line fades to nothing at all. This is a world of capes and lunatics. And nothing is off limits. <laughs> Today, Lilith Hellfire, environmentalist living in her Arctic fortress of solitude, teaching compromise to the world. Charlie Esser, king of the Google, promoting Google all over the world. Kindle and wait. No. Or is it Amazon? That's Amazon. No, I was I was against Amazon, although as I said last night, well we'll get to that. Start the show, we'll talk about it. He's so poor he had to wait like forty eight hours for his Krypton. Capes and Lunatic starts. Ooh. And I'm going international. Capes and Lunatic starts right now. No, right now. <laughs> now. <laughs> now. What's oh, wow. for doing it live, Phil? Hello and oh, welcome okay. to the tr our trademark uh, Not So Perfect Capes and Lunatics, episode 45. I, again, I am Phil. That chilly girl over there is... Little Hellfire, y'all. And the king of the Amazon... Charlie the Professor Esser. So, yeah, so last night, last night I was going on my tirade, and actually I'm, I'm going to make this point that my central premise is still true, that far more problematic than net neutrality is a device restriction. Because after all that said, still no YouTube on um, Amazon. Although I, I guess Alexa is listening to me because... The other day, because when I turned it on, uh, they, they did have uh, that. You can get to YouTube by going through Silk. I'm like, okay, Amazon, please. Charlie, stop. do I have to come visit you and put the Google Play Store on your tablet? Is that what <laughs> I'm going to have to do? No, I have Google Play, but if my tablet so is a Kindle, you, you, if you have Amazon devices, in order to, there is not a YouTube app for Amazon in the way that there's a YouTube app for Android devices. Right, you have to actually download the Google, that's the first thing I did when I got mine. I was like, okay, how do we do this? Let me get the Google Play Store, let me get the Google Accounts Management, and boom, done. I, I do not like the Fire okay. OS at all, so. Yeah. Okay, anyway, but but like I said, there the, last night, um, after I went through, onto my whole thing and making this point about how Krypton, I could purchase Krypton, but I couldn't get it on for free, even though I could get it for free through other systems. Last night, Krypton showed up on Sci-Fi on Kindle. So there was a delay. We'll see how much that delay carries forward. Um, and you know, what's annoying about it is that like, you know, not every app, like for example, Hulu, has live TV the next day, but not for every channel. And CW isn't really on Hulu as much as like ABC is. So, well, but I can't. They have their own app. You don't well, have. To yeah. Say, you don't like it. Well, I don't like having. You know, it's hard enough. I want to do this to get to my channels. This is the thing, and this is what I was saying. You know that there's a difference between when you're on your phone or on a tablet or even on your computer. And when you're sitting in the big comfy chair with the remote and you're flipping. And right now, with DirecTV now as the app, I can't I, – well, you can flip, but it's like – because you, you, you flip left to right instead of up and down, which is a little weird, but I can get used to it. But you do the guide overlay, and that's how you – that's normally how, how you change channels, as you can scroll through the guide overlay, and then you can select your next channel. Now, what – um. Which is good, which is okay, which is okay. Hardest thing with it is that the channels are structured or organized alphabetically. So it's like ABC's up here and NBC's down here and then, you know, and CBS is in the middle. And it's just weird that they have it structured like that. But you live, you live. These, these, are, these are minor issues, but it's like, it's not what I'm used to. 
I'm an old man. I want two, three, four, kids seven. Kids keep you young. Kids keep you young. You'll get used to it. And like yeah. next month, you'll be like a pro at it. You won't even. Oh, think I know. About I know. It. Anyway, but it's it's we're surviving, and uh, and I do say, you know, you complain and things happen. Where's my? If first? nothing else, Alexa hears all, and uh, oh yes. So, <laughs> although Alexa has been having so many problems because it's like every time. Anything happens, Alexa forgets how to get back into the Wi-Fi. So it's like every day I have to reattach her to the Wi-Fi. Uh, Alexa, my, the Echo Dot is not very um, – doesn't remember how to get, get into – what. it doesn't know how to get into the Wi-Fi very well. Well, you should be thankful for that, just in case. <laughs> yeah. It takes time the to build Skynet and do that. The, 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 the other issue I'm having right now is that I've, I've recently learned there's a difference between – a uh, 2.5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection and a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, and that a lot of devices can't connect to a 5, although 5 has the better has the better system. So, for example, the Kindles can't connect to the 5. They have to connect through the 2.5. My computer has to connect to a 2.5. It cannot connect to the 5 gigahertz uh, connection. Yeah, it's because they're not officially rolling the whole 5 all the way out. It's like limited area. Yeah. Or something like that. It's not universally adapted yet. I know, and it's it's a pain in the turkey because the 5 is better. So my, 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 my device, my hub can go up to 5. I can put it on the 5, and as soon as you put it on 5, everything runs so much smoother if it can, can connect to 5. But a lot of our devices can't connect to the 5. They have to connect to the 2.5, so. First world you get, problem. You'll get a patch soon and it, it'll be fine. <laughs> one hopes, one hopes. Anyway. So yeah, that's that that's the world of my technology. Uh, <laughs> did you like Krypton? All that trouble? Did you actually like it? <laughs> uh, actually, so here's here's what I said. My, like my bar for Krypton is don't be DC's version of the inhumans. And it is better than the inhumans. It didn't fuck us. <laughs> It didn't buck us. No, it was. Um, it's not a bucked up show. There, there are a lot of issues that like pull me out of the show. First off, you know exactly what part of London is Krypton located in? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, or is that just Candor? And like, are all the is it? There's more than one city on Krypton, right? Yeah. Because like everyone lives in Candor. I'm a little weird. I'm a little confused about what the geography of Krypton was because I actually thought Candor was like over on the south side of Krypton. I didn't. I didn't think everyone lived in Kandar. I thought Kandar was like another city. That's why other people like survive after Brainiac takes Kandor and Kandar sh- Kandor and shrinks it. Boy, Governor, yeah. this is the bad part of town. Yeah. Well, oh, okay, so I, I think I figured out why Krypton was in development hell for so long. Um, yes. It was it was developed by David S. Goyer, who also had a hand in Constantine. And after that whole debacle, they kind of had to do what they did with Scott Buck and kind of remove him from some things. <laughs> so, and they had to retool it. So, and you know, not for nothing, Constantine did have two pilots technically. I think Krypton actually probably ends up with like three pilots if you all the reshoots and stuff that they had to do to it. So, just, I think the second yeah. and third, as it goes on and we see less Goyer influence, it'll get better. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, see, my biggest issues with it so far are kind of technical, like, the, and kind of confusing to me, like, like the fact that before Phantom Zone technology was created, the chosen method of execution is literally throwing you off a cliff. It's a pretty oh, weird... So. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, it's like not even like lethal injection. It's like, we're going to throw you off a cliff. I love how um, I love how they got rid of natural childbirth before they got rid of you know tossing people off a cliff. Yeah, well, you know, priorities, people, priorities. Some things are just more fun, okay? <laughs> well, you know what? And for what it's worth, apparently, with this voice of Rao, um, you know, obviously the um, the people of Krypton are uh, maybe maybe they do have Phantom Zone technology, but the voice of Rao is just real old school. It's obviously a religious cult, so it's like, <clears throat> just like how even in the modern world, some cultures still practice stoning and things like that. You know, maybe that's, the Kryptons are still, the Kryptonians are like, and we're going to go back to throwing people off of cliffs, because that's just how we roll. 
Which is weird. I was I was a little disappointed that they didn't kind of take maybe in going forward they will like the small bill where science is our religion kind of thing that they did when they um, introduced General Zod and all that stuff. Well, I mean, I think there is some aspect of science is the religion, but I think you have that that concept that science is the religion because we have that whole thing with the oracle, you know, that whole scene with the oracle, and it is that quasi predictive, that quasi magical sense of the order of their of their lives so i think that there is this idea that maybe there is that science is religion but then you also rather than getting the best of science and religion you get the worst of science and religion you yeah, get like it seems like <laughs> yeah you know you get and okay and now here's my biggest thing voice of Ralph, guy in a big gold helmet what do you want to wager that there is somebody that we're supposed to know underneath that helmet that in the like end of the season that helmet's going to come off and that's Lex Luthor or that's General Zod. Yeah. It's somebody because we know someone from the future is coming to the past. It's booster gold. Um, I don't know who Wrong. evil booster gold with a uh, goatee. I, I'm not sure. Does booster gold have a villain who's also a time traveler? Is there a time traveler villain? This should be a time traveler villain. That'd be cool. He might have had one in, the, in that ongoing series. I don't know. It's all it's all weird. Booster Gold. Yeah. We don't talk about Booster Gold. <laughs> no, um, I mean, supposedly they have plans for him live action, but we, that never materializes. So who knows? But uh, yeah. and why Adam Strange? Adam Strange isn't like technically a time traveler. Is that because they use Rip Hunter? Rip Hunter on Legends of Tomorrow? Uh, probably yes. Exactly. They use Rip Hunter on Legends of Tomorrow, and so they needed someone else to put in this. Um, and but you know what I'll say for it, I'm glad he's not British, because I wasn't even like that. Rip Hunter was British, never sat right with me from the start with that, um, because I just don't think of Rip Hunter as British. Uh, I'm glad they made him a uh, Detroiter, because you know, uh, or at least they 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 call it to the Detroit Tigers, which I love. You know, it's weird to me because, you know, when I think of Adam Strange, I think of the guy in the red skin tight suit with the helmet and the jetpack. You know, um, it, it was weird to me that, yeah, it is weird that Adam Strange is the guy that they're using for this rather than. And what it is, is they had already used um, Rip Hunter and they didn't want to have a secondary Rip Hunter in this. They can't use Booster Gold because they're not sure what they want to do with Booster Gold yet. Mm. Um Honestly, and they probably didn't want to do uh, the challengers because then they had to have four actors. So it's like the, the people that they had on their short list was dwindling, and they said, "Ah, get Adam Strange. He goes to space." Honestly, maybe they might... were trying to capitalize on the Doctor Strange thing too. Like maybe they don't know. Maybe they'll get confused and wander over. This is Doctor yeah. Strange's son. What? <laughs> I'm yeah. saying, you know, some people that don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. My mom. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, that, that, that's a that, that uh, that's a whole other weird thing that everyone speaks English, just different accents. Uh, no, it's it's the we gotta understand that. them, Charlie. I'm not reading. I know, like I know, but it just made it like so. For example, when when Seg's mom says, "Tell me about this strange person," it struck me, "Hey, strange is probably a word to them." Like the word strange sounds strange and he's strange, you know, like the pun, they get the pun, which is weird because you shouldn't be able to get cross-cultural puns like that. <laughs> I, who is that guy? Like, I don't even know who, they, like, I don't know who any of these people are. Like, I don't know where they got them. Oh, I think they're all made up. I don't think we've ever gone this far back in the, or even the, the actors. actors. In the yeah. Oh, who the, the actors are? Yeah. Oh, the guy who plays the, uh, Kellel's great grandfather, grandfather or great grandfather. Are you talking about Rupert Graves? Seg's, Seg's, Seg's father. I've seen him. Yeah, Tim L. Yeah, that was Rupert Graves. That's the only person I recognize. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, they use they usually get unknowns for these kind of things. I mean, who was uh, Todd Willing before Tom Willing before? Um, Tom Willing was actually. I mean, I I'd seen him before Smallville in a couple oh, okay. of things. So. I okay, haven't seen well. any of these people. <laughs> You okay, don't watch well, judging Amy. It's okay. It's okay. It's a, you know what? They're probably know. British actors. And so they're probably, and you know, maybe that's why they're I know. Like, who, they're pure British actors because I watch a lot of British TV shows. <laughs> okay, that's what, like that's what I was going to say. They're probably up and coming British actors. <laughs> up and coming. Okay. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, um, Brick only think, has like ten actors, ten main actors. So I do think I wow. and I do think I, I've seen the mom before, but I can't remember where. Um, you know, none of them have Cockney accents. Thank God. Although, although Deng said got close to it several times. Oh. Um, now you that know, he's down in like, the mean streets in the bars of uh, Krypton, uh, bars of Kandor, throwing punches and throwing fights, you know. Um. Yeah, I mean that that was its own weirdness. But like I said, there's a lot of stuff that that strike like, and I think Phil, you were saying this how there's nothing that really makes you think this is a Superman show. Yeah, yeah, it it just seems like a as a futuristic sci-fi you know adventure series, which yeah. is fine. But except for a couple S symbols and like a red cape, I really didn't get the feel of like a DC show. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. So and that's not a bad it. thing necessarily. True, yeah. true. And like and, I said, and not since he didn't feel like a DC and show. It's the, and it's the first week too. I mean, I will give it time. Yeah. You know, well, you, you got to wait for the panic and flop sweat to kick in. Although we got Brainiac. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, right off the bat, we're getting Brainiac. So that to me was it was a big seller. It was a bit um, of interesting design too, by the way. Oh well, yeah, I liked it though. It reminded me kind of of the design they had in the. If you've ever seen the Death of Superman Lives, and you see the designs they had for Brainiac there, I thought that it was kind of reminiscent of that. Um, I think that would have been a good. Manhunter, to be honest, just a little bit. Well, yeah, but that's. I mean that. I, I think their designs were similar to start with, you know. I mean, just gr- green alien character was the original design, and there we go. Um, and I loved your point last night, Charlie. You were like, "Why is the House of L the only ones who wear capes?" But you know, that's what? why they get ostracized because you don't wear capes. It's too you know what? <laughs> but no, no, not not all of them wear capes. Just the granddad wore capes. Just Val, just Val L wore a cape. He was the only one wearing a cape. He was the only one with the fashion sense to rock it. And like we said last night, I, I think that basically the L's were maybe just kind of fashion forward as a as a as a people. Not most bees. That's why. They, that's why they were throwing. That's why they were throwing them off the cliff. They're like, here, let's see if you can fly with that cape. Oh, no. Yeah, I was waiting for it, man. You know, here's some of the plot lines I want to see in Krypton. I want someone to start introducing yellow sun radiation to Kryptonians. Because it strikes me that if their physiognomy is going to have this kind of reaction to ultraviolet radiation, someone's got to figure that out and figure out, hey, man, we can get hopped up on sun, you know, and get, like, short bursts of super strength, super power, and have it be like a whole underground drug scene you know i'd love to see that uh, in the kryptonian uh i mean in, in a lot backstory. of the lord you know they did know and that's why they sent him to you know sent superman to where they sent him to so well, maybe. well in the john byrne they well they didn't know or they didn't know in the lore some of them some of them they do yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. And, and some that's why jor-el sends him to earth because he yeah. he's gonna get you can be us yeah. yeah exactly but um, no one's gonna laugh at you for wearing a cape <laughs> And if they do incinerate them with your with your laser vision, <laughs> but if we but if we if we want masks and capes on this show, I was thinking, why don't they introduce like those um two uh those two legendary Kryptonian heroes, Nightwing and Flamebird? You can't do Nightwing because of the Titans, though. Yeah, but you can't say that's where they they came from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's always uh, yeah. Uh, I always want a Nightwing mention when it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> you're getting a whole, you're getting a whole Titans live action show, Phil. Don't That's be greedy. Right. Don't mess it up, people. Um, well, it is Greg Berlanti still being responsible, so don't get your hopes up, kiddo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. You know, um, you know, but like I said, I I enjoyed it for a first episode. I liked the Adam Strange character. You know, and and again. Adam Strange is a character that no one has a strong opinion on. I'm I'm willing to wager. Uh. So they can they can go out there with an Adam Strange. And so long as they don't make him a complete total jerk or something, you can actually have a lot of fun with the character and create this whole mythos for an Adam Strange character. And maybe even make Adam Strange an interesting person in the books. Make Adam Strange great again. Yeah, well, you know what? It happens, you know. You put it. You take some kind of 
secondary character from some series, from some book, and you put him on the TV show, and suddenly that character's, oh, that character's cool. And you can build up this whole... Exactly. (laughs) You know, finally being the the second-rate Batman pastiche paid off because... They can't use Batman. Well, who do we have who's exactly like Batman? But we can use Green oh! Arrow. Like literally go. the reasoning is so messed up. <laughs> well, exactly. Well, no, it's they can't use Batman. So who do we have who is exactly like Batman? Who can be our Batman for Smallville and then later Arrow? And Stephen know? Amell rejoiced. <laughs> well, Jester Harley rejoiced. <laughs> yeah, People, yeah, everyone needs work, you know, and, and goodness bless them, you know. Um, it's great. It, it is great that that is what that that's why Green Arrow actually gets to be a character now that is noted and well beloved in the DC comic book universe because of his reinvention through Smallville and he gets to his, make the money, so he gets to be treated better. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's how it goes. But, you know, the only reason he got to be there was because they could do whatever they wanted with him, you know, because no one because no one was really worrying. Oh, they ruined Green Arrow. Well, that's well, not necessarily was. true. Well, okay. That's not necessarily true, but we all just, well, this is about Superman, so we're just going to let that go. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, but. But like I said, even if there are people who are going to say they ruined Green Arrow, it's not as many people who are going to say they ruined the Flash. You know what I mean? The Flash is the the Flash was on the Super Friends. Green Arrow didn't get in there until like third or fourth season, if he was lucky, as a replacement in a background scene. You know. Meanwhile, everybody loves Green Arrow. Justice League and Justice League on Just say it. Maybe not your generation, but my generation. No, 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 no. I'm saying I'm not saying that Green Arrow didn't didn't build up, but that all came after Smallville. Uh, Justice League Unlimited was before Smallville. Was it? It was like in the early. It was in the early days, wasn't it? Justice League Unlimited. Yeah, yeah. Justice. It was Justice League and then Justice League Unlimited. Yeah. Yeah, but I think Small Smallville was around for a long time, and Green Arrow got introduced relatively. Relatively quickly into the storyline, if I recall correctly. No, was it? No, season six. Season six, yeah, but that thing. Out of ten, out of ten, though. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know. I I felt like he was there for a while. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've watched any of these shows, but I think I do think that Smallville predated Justice League Unlimited. I do think so. But we would we would have to go to the we have to go to the. I'm not going to the Google Schmoogle anyway. That DC animated okay. universe has got a confusing timeline. <laughs> yes, but anyway, but 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 the point is, is is that you know prior to either reinvention, whether it was on Justice League Unlimited or whether it was on Smallville, prior to that reimagining or not even reimagining, but bringing more to the fore of the character, you know the character wasn't as big. And when you have a character who's not as big, you can do more interesting things with him. Just like as as an example. Harvey Bullock and Gotham. Now, granted, Harvey Bullock isn't an unknown character, but because he he is a secondary character, you can do so much more to the depth of Harvey Bullock when you put him in a Gotham than you necessarily would if you were in a show that had to have a Batman in it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I was here for it, especially with the casting. I was like, oh my God, it's it's freaking yes. I, I wasn't so crazy about Ben McKenzie as Gordon, even though I love Ben McKenzie, but that Harvey mm-hmm. book, it totally sold me. So yeah. Yeah. Don yeah. Logue is yeah. He did he did he's as great with that. So yes. Poor guy. Uh, <laughs> do, do, do you enjoy yeah, was going good. I, saw, I, I just saw the last episode. That was good. I liked it. I know, but their ratings are just hemorrhaging. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, it just seems like they're going around in a circle. It's like, okay, this is this one's going to be crime boss this week, and you know, there's going to be drama between Gordon and a woman, Gordon and Bullock. They uh, really shouldn't have moved it Mondays for Lucifer. I'm I'm just saying. I think Lucifer works better on a Thursday. I don't want to start my week off with a devil. I'm just Lucifer, saying. Where's Lu- the weekend? I think Lucifer worked better at nine o'clock instead of eight o'clock. Yeah, it's it's gotten a little more campy at the eight o'clock slot. Yeah, I'm still not. I'm still not sold on. Tristan likes it. 
Um, but <laughs> you know, we we we. But you know, but again, we we watch it because that's like the only channel that was coming in. Now we've got more channels, so we can have a little more fun with it. But uh, you know, it is what it is. I love the therapist. She's great. I love Maze, but everybody else can go right in hell, literally. <laughs> you're not you're not feeling Tom Welling as Kane. At first I was, and it's just like, okay, this is dragged on way too long. That that's Lucifer's problem. They drag things out way too long. And it, and they're using him as for like the love triangle. It's like, oh my god. Lucy, you're doing a love triangle. It's it's Clara and Chloe and oh it's just I can't. That's all I see when I see him in the love triangle. All I think of is Lana Lang. <laughs> Christian uh, Crook. Tom, Tom Welling, king of the love triangles. At least he's working. True. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, and, uh, you and know, freak- King's cool. And freaking Gotham, I mean, for a show that's supposed- supposedly grounded in reality, how many people they really get <laughs> oh, on that wait, show? Wait, wait. We wait, haven't been to that point in a long time. I know, but like, originally, like what, what, yeah. one and a half. Originally, I should say, originally. Yeah, well, originally, originally it wasn't supposed to have supervillains or uh, well, Batman. Or you even know? Batman. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it was Bruce supposed gets a to... one-off. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be, you know, Bullock and, and, and Gordon on the mean streets of Gotham. You know, maybe you meet the Penguin as, you know, an underling, but you weren't Which supposed we to get Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and... And then they put Edward Nigma in, and then you know, and once once they put Edward Nigma in, I, I think that was the that, that I won't say it ruined the show. I will say that 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 pretty much since the first episode, I'll say that that, that once you committed to Edward Nigma, you were pretty much saying this is the pre this is the dark gritty re- reboot of Batman sixty six. Yeah, that's the, yeah, is, and that, yeah, that is a accurate description. <laughs> well, I didn't make that up. I didn't make it up. That, that I got that from CBR. But that's basically what it is. Is like this is that universe of Batman, which is very, very much reminiscent and also kind of related to what you saw with the um, uh, oh, uh, the Burton Batman universe, which again was highly influenced by that Batman sixty six universe in its own way as well. And sort of bringing in this entire cartoonishness of the supervillainy into into that real world, and uh, and you know if you're gonna have a guy who dresses in a like a bat at the end of the series, you kind of have to explain why that doesn't just make everyone go. You are clearly a mental case. You got to make him seem like the sane one. So you got to really play up how how messed up the rest of Gotham is up to the point that everyone goes, yeah, a guy will dress like a bat. Thank goodness we have one of those. It's the branding. You could tell he's put thought into it. The rest of them just go out and start killing people. They don't put any thought into it. Mm-hmm. Did did I hear right that they're thinking about doing a No Man's Land for Gotham arc? I heard gonna, that rumor. I was like, isn't it No Man's Land already? Anyway, they never have government assistance ever. Seriously, that's <laughs> I, I. So I know Tyler was talking. Gotham is dead to the rest of the world. <laughs> like, how how long are they going to drag this out? It's like just throw him in the suit and end it already. I mean, he's already like six foot. Two, exactly. So I think we're exactly. Good to go. All you do is get that kid in the gym, and you got a Batman. Yeah, well, you know, they they put him in. They just he has the suit, just no ears or a chest piece. Oh yeah, the Midnighter suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's oh, pretty much. Although he hasn't even worn that. Wow. Um, you know, all... Yeah, nobody was looking at it the other day. They always threw it into the fire because you know you have to have that. You know, Peter Parker is Spider Man no more scene. You know, where. <laughs> There, there are a lot of like, you know, if you were a cosplayer in in New York City, you could really do great by getting like just discarded Spider Man costumes because Peter Parker <laughs> just throws those into garbage cans like every every couple of months. So it's like these are this is like a really authentic Spider Man costume. I love. I that. like that Ben Riley who sticks it through. <laughs> He's not such a menace. <sighs> but anyway. So I actually, there was one thing I wanted to ask um, Lilith, as a big fan of Constantine, uh, Constantine is now officially one of the legends. And now I didn't watch Constantine. Well, I watched like the first couple episodes of Constantine. Um, 
And I've seen Constantine on this show before. Did it seem to you like they really ramped up the comedy on Constantine in this last episode? Yeah, they like, did. Like, like to an <laughs> uncomfortable it's... level? Well, he's an uncomfortable character. And, you know, it, it, they didn't really get the British wit, like which is kind of dry. They they went over the top with it, which, you know, I know a couple British people who are also over the top. But, yeah, it's like they, I think they need to go sit down and rewatch Constantine and read a couple of books to really get his yeah. character. But I didn't really have a problem with it because he's very... um. What's the word I'm looking for to describe him? Like he is, it's not like he's antisocial or anything like that, but he's like, um, I'm thinking of trying to think of that word where he just doesn't care like what like how like he gets in people's face and says what he wants. Well no, misanthropic usually implies someone who's much more depressed. Yeah, he's not a he, you know, he's very manipulative and charming when he wants to be. And I think they were trying to play it up, but that writer's room just kind of doesn't mm, <laughs> do well with that. I mean, look at how they put Sarah and Ava together. I just was like, mm, okay. I'm supposed to yeah. believe that's a relationship kind of thing. So I just don't think they get the dynamic shit. And, you know, I have to say that that foot just pulled me out of the whole show. Because that was clearly a, a, a chew toy for foot. a dog. Yeah, that was clearly yeah. a dog's <laughs> chew toy. I mean, like, like not, even, like, not even pretending to not be a rubber chew toy foot. That didn't, it didn't even look like it was the right size for an actual human. I thought we were going to get another peacock feather, to be honest. <laughs> and he was going to tickle his balls with it. Like, that would have been... <laughs> no. You know, let me see. Like, I, I do have some, like, like I said about, you know, Krypton. Sci fi is in the universal family. So I hope it works out for you guys. I hope it gets treated better. But they also were responsible yeah. for how Powerless got the reboot that I think the first draft was. The first draft of Powerless was better before they retooled it, in my personal opinion. I saw the script and I saw a couple of the scenes and stuff. And it was just like, mm, then we got that. So, no. Oh yes. Ah, uh, what are you gonna do? But anyway, um, but you know, did you like Constantine or no? Do you think um, he's gonna be a good addition? Well, you know, I think, like I said, I kind of felt like the way they were handling a lot of the stuff in that last episode felt very weird. Like, like it would just got it. It didn't strike me as an episode that should have been having the comedy played up so much. With a death totem um, and Sarah potentially losing her soul and working for Dark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like, really? Maybe we should, you know. And just, you know, I liked Rory getting the fire totem. That was kind of cool. Um, you know, so that that that's a neat addition I'm to the idea. I didn't think about it sooner, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, and in general, it was it was all a very in, it was interesting. But like I said, the Constantine scenes just kind of pulled me out of it, and. You know, I'm. I think Constantine could be a great addition. I've always thought Constantine would be a great addition, but that as the episode. So I think the earlier episodes we've had with Constantine were a much better selling point for Constantine and the Legend. Well, we're, you have to think about episode. time travel is not necessar necessarily meshes well with mysticism, which is why it's like a time traveling demon this season. It's just kind of like this this weird thing. It's like he's in a time prison and we have to unlock it and the totems. And I think it's just all too many concepts. They they should like stuff with one yeah. and focus on that instead of trying to like, have this mishmash. Yeah, but you got to remember that DC goes very mystical with its sci-fi all the time. I mean, just the whole speed force and speed demons and things like that re really speak into that entire that, that there is this quasi mystical element to even something that is ostensibly sci-fi yeah but just so, not for the legends though like i just don't feel like that was something for the legends to handle. like time travel it's fun i like it when they except for that elvis episode for the most part i like when they really yeah. go in on a time period i know and but and and for what it's worth, that ship is already sealed. Last last season, they were chasing after the Spear of Destiny, or maybe that was two seasons ago. You know, that was last I mean, season, I think. Yeah, it's like that. That mystical quality of the show has been there for a while. So, and Damian Dark is a magic user, and so you know. Yeah, and and I, like I said, I like I like that they picked up Neil McDonald, but like they're not really doing anything with him. So it's just like. Like he shows up every eighth episode, every third episode. Yeah, and, tw and twirls. Does his little hand yeah. wave, my little yeah. girl kind of thing. Yeah. Well, they're trying to have that father daughter arc, and I think they're actually trying to give him some kind of a redemption arc at the end of it. I think that's essentially what they're what what they're working towards is this idea that they're trying. I think they're actually trying to Loki him, where oh. they're where they're trying to have this character who is evil. 
but they're going to, but they're, and I guess people find him charming. Um, so that it, it's going to have to lead to him with this reaction with his daughter and his love for his daughter is going to lead him to betray malice to try and save the universe because, you know, to quote Rocket Raccoon, Oh no! To quote, uh, what's his name? All my stuff is in the galaxy. You know, it, it, it's like you know, this is where we live. We li- well, he didn't live in care about that when he was on Arrow. He had his wife and his daughter then. So <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but then again, this is why it's a redemption arc, and this is why it's time travel. Because what happens here that redeems his character doesn't necessarily affect that, and that's sort of this idea that there can be these parallel timeline Damien Darks. Just like we can still have a Captain Cold, even though Captain Cold is dead. You know, Captain Cold can still be over in the in in the uh, Frasher verse. Um, but uh, you know, in the Legends universe, he's dead. So it, it's like when you're in that time sphere, you can have characters that can have these arcs that take them completely outside of their characters, which is a for what it's worth, maybe a selling point for the entire series. You know what I think, though? I think, like, Constantine isn't needed because I feel like he's a more verbal Mick. I feel like those two are very similar. They're very, mm-hmm. like, well, the Constantine that I know. I don't know what they're going to actually do with Constantine in the show. But, like, he's kind of, mm-hmm. like, grumpy and definitely a misanthrope and enjoys his yeah. alone time and his beers and stuff. So Yeah, he wasn't very misanthropic in this. He was much more of a bon vivant. And uh, to 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 go to my old uh, White Wolf character descriptions, um, you know, and uh, yeah, he, th- which is why I felt that it didn't really work for me this last episode. Um, I mean, other aspects of the episode I did think worked, but like the whole Constantine, and like I said, that foot thing, and the whole relationship with the captain and and the. The lady from the time Sarah, bureau. It's, it's, it's avalanche, as an avalanche. That's what the shippers call them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, anyway. exactly. Well, honestly, I actually thought the relationship was nice. I didn't get why they had to kill the relationship. Well, it's not but, dead yet. Oh, well, I know. But, but you know, it's that whole, I'm too, I'm too dark for you. I don't want to hurt you thing. It's just like... Yeah. Hmm. You know what? That's just so cliche, and I've seen it enough. In they they want their Chicks female. Fan. They Chicks. want their they want their female Oliver Queen. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay. CW, yeah, yeah, okay. Um. But uh, but then this morning, uh, I guess CW Seed app dropped the uh, five five episodes of the uh, Constantine animated series, ten minutes apiece. So, like, there's a CW app and a CW Seed app. What is the difference here? CW Seed is more like their, like, pet projects. And it's, like, where the original season of Flash is, the original, the first season of Con- the Constantine live action show. And, and they do, like, the mostly their comedy stuff there. So it's just, like, okay. all these side projects that CW does, they put it on the CW Seed. So there's, like, all these other shows. And sometimes in the summertime, they put the Seed shows on the actual CW show. Yeah, but um, why do I why why do I have to go and download a completely different app for the same network? These people, it, it's like it's, it's it's a it's like um it's like it's like NBC and uh, USA. That think of it like that. So okay. if you want your Law and Order like marathons, you go to USA. If you want no, the it, new episodes, you go to NBC. And, and as a channel, that works. As an app, I don't get that. Because the whole point of the nap is, it's nap. It's here's here's you know, here's the I, platform I for watching the show. Was, yeah, I heard the CW is expanding to Sunday night, so maybe we actually won't even have the CWC except for like live action cartoons and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, but like maybe I said, it's what a bandwidth thing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, and, and I guess you know maybe it's like how there's, I mean, and I, like for me, I, like I get why there's an Adult Swim app and a Cartoon Network app. You know, because those are two different, although they do have a lot of overlap, they are technically two different target audiences. Yeah, know? yeah, I think the CWC might be a different target audience, but okay. But uh, I don't know. Like, it seems like they have the same characters because you're talking about a Constantine cartoon. I'm like, isn't Constantine on the CW? It's I don't know. But Lil, um, next episode of uh, Newcastle Crew, are we going to do those five episodes of uh? Uh-uh, let's piece it out. 
I, I, mm -mm. I, oh. I need them. <laughs> Wait, you want to do each one as an episode? They're only like 10 minute episodes. Oh, God. Okay, fine. I mean, if you want, but I mean, each episode's only 10 minutes long. I don't know how you're going to get a whole podcast out of each one. 15 minutes. We're good. That's what we, that's what we set the Newcastle Crew podcast if, at. Like, if that's what you want to do, that's fine with me. I mean, we but just, then like, your review is actually longer than, than the show. Well, come on. It's the case of lunatics. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> Branding. Oh, branding. There we go. All right. Okay. I, I know Lilith is chomping at the bit to talk Black Lightning. Yeah. Did anybody else watch it this week? Yes, I watched it. I, oh my gosh, like, yes, this is how you react to being lied to. It was a little over the top, but I, I like this episode overall. This is actually coming together quite nicely. Season one is shaping up to be a pretty darn good season, first season for a superhero show. Thunder, Thunder okay. got her official suit. Uh, Jennifer discovers she has powers and freaked out. <laughs> like, who just, I mean, I could lift a bed, though, not for nothing. <laughs> With a human being on it? Yeah. But, I, you it's know, not it, that it, high, but I can lift I, it. <laughs> I, I, I guess, the, I guess the, uh, for Canadian citizenship, they don't test for steroids. Okay. <laughs> no. no, but, you know, it, it, it's less about lifting it and more about the ease with which you do it. It's like, so, you know, fair enough. it's like, yeah, she's uh, not going, uh, yeah, you know, um, yeah, when, when it, when it, when it's easy to do it, then, then that, that is, that is a different thing. Now here's my question to you, because I, I've been sitting with the black lightning issue because of course I, I missed a bunch of episodes. So my question is, do I go back and do I watch all the previous episodes or do I just jump in full feet right now? You because can do I'm, it either way. But I think it, at least watch the one where it's more Tobias focused, where he wants to go kill him, um, where Black Lightning wants to go kill him, and they have that discussion. What is that, episode five, though? Maybe. Yeah, the one that's about Tobias and him wanting to kill him. That is a great episode. And the, the villain, I really enjoy the villain in this series. Like, they, they finally got it right with, like, a villain that feels threatening. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start at episode five, and I'll start rewatching, and I'll try and catch up by... Uh... By uh, next week, we'll see. We'll see what we can. Unfortunately, they were sold out of Vampironica, so I didn't. Get yeah, I saw that. Movie. I'm so sad. Uh, but they said, yeah, it'll be a couple weeks before they get it. But they're gonna order it for me. It's so gonna I'll be get my Wait, I think you're really gonna enjoy it. I think it'll uh, scratch all the itches. <laughs> well, you know, and then maybe, maybe that'll be my first one to go back on pull because I'm off of pulls right now, and so, you know, do, does Archie have like? Can you like buy it digitally or? I think you can, but I, that's actually one of the things that I don't even buy. Yeah. Think about. They have an app, I think, so you might be able to do it digitally. Yeah. You know, my, my thing is I'm, I'm always very uncomfortable with buying digital comics. I've done a couple, and I was debating if I wanted to get the, um, the Infinity War preludes digitally, but I was like, you know what? I got to support my local comic book shop, you know? Because, you know, those, the, the, those guys need my help, man. Well, yeah, one of the biggest comic book stores in LA, uh, The Melt, is closing down for business. Well, yeah, that's because well, they treat their customers like crap. I've, I've been in that place more than once. And yeah, so I mean, maybe some other people have had better experiences, but every single time I went in there. Customer service people. Yeah, I get the feeling that like big comic book stores are harder to maintain than small shops. Because I do see lots of small shops that do open up. I do see some that close, but I do see a lot of small shops that open up and stay open. You know, and I think there's enough of an interest in the business model that, you know, in the business that, you know, multiple cities can maintain more than one comic book shop, you know. So, you know, I mean... I like that they still exist. I like the comic book shops still exist. Yeah, and, I, I, I prefer the well. I don't think that I prefer the mom and pop. I prefer the mom and pop feel, but they like actually like hire people that know what they're talking about. It's not just like you know somebody's grandma that doesn't read comic books. They're just there at the register. <laughs> like they actually yeah. like hire some knowledgeable a, staff. You know what I mean? I've never been to a comic book store that 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 I felt like that was the case. Usually the people I that have, are they're mostly like collectible shops that just happen to sell comic books. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, this this that that might be. Yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. I've I've never. I I mean, I don't really see those very much. So, because I go to I get my comic books at a comic book store. 
So well, they, they build this comic book shop. You go, ooh, okay. Let me just. Ah, ah so the, they've expanded into the comic book. Well, man, uh, comic books is not a business. It might, be a, it might be a Florida thing because that's where I noticed it the most. So. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've noticed, like, you know, I've seen antique dealers that have comic books, but they, they always are an antique shop. And, oh, we have some comic books over there, you know. The store I go to has been there for a while because, like, they're like he's, like, primarily comic books and, you know, some collectibles now. But back in the day, it was, like, the big things were comic books and CDs. CDs? Well, this was, like, in the 90s, yeah. I know, but that's just a weird combination. CDs. I know. Uh-huh. You know, it's like a music shop and a comic book shop. That's well, no, I don't know I about that. that. Well, I mean, maybe if it was albums and it was like, like history, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Get your LPs and your comic books. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but anyway, uh, yeah, but no, I go to comic book shops that are primarily comic book shops. But you know, then again, I live in New Jersey, and you know, we are a. Uh, I think you know this is where Kevin Smith is from, so we maybe have a weird market for nerdery in that way. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think the Northeast does have like that whole thing going for it. Yeah, more so than yeah. anywhere else. Oh, they're calling you all. They're cut. Oh, you two are calling out the whole Northeast, huh? Well, yeah. Like I, I mean, when I when I go to Boston, there's tons of comic book shops too, and uh, even even in Philly, there's a ton of comic book shops. Yeah. So, uh, I like the Northeast. I like where I live. It's it, the it, summer's it, great. I can't deal with those winters. I don't know how y'all do it. Oh, <laughs> I'll listen to Miss Canada. I don't know how you deal with the winters. I, I'm dying. My blood thinned out while I was in Florida. I'm like, I mean, I did live in a place that had snow before Florida. You, you, you'll acclimate. You'll acclimate. And that's you're in Vancouver. It's not like it's, it's not so like you got cold. Okay, go. Toronto, where you get the lake effect snow. That is that is where it's or Ontario or, or anywhere in Ontario or like Windsor. Oh, Windsor! You don't want to be in Windsor, man. That's right across from Detroit. You definitely don't want to be in Windsor. <laughs> Detroit gets a horrible winter. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Although it's it, it's kind of neat because you you can, you can have that little Gotham Metropolis vibe thing where it's like it's right Detroit. over the bridge. And <laughs> yes. <something> better. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Um, Detroit has casinos now, so you know. Yeah, well, so does for that. Yeah, as I'm saying, you don't need to go across the bridge for that anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that was one of the reasons they actually legalized uh, g- gambling in Detroit was they said, look, we've got a casino in Windsor, and all of our money is going to Canada. We don't want to help out those friendly giant watching bastards. So <laughs> <laughs> those kids in the hall with their hey, with their flappy heads and their beady little eyes. <laughs> This was before them. That that's that's that you know that is that newfangled South Park. Yeah, that's that's a weird thing, man. That that, oh got, that that got so popular so fast. Well, yeah, I know South Park's been around for a while, but Canada's existed longer than South Park. <laughs> it had its own set of culture and stereotypes long before long before they should decided to make a joke about their cheesy animation within their cheesy animation show because that was just the whole <laughs> i don't think they had originally intended in fact i would wager well no because i guess i mean yeah who knows who knows what they actually intended when they created all these things but i got a feeling it wasn't all this big board with lines and this will be how we introduce the fact that all canadians have floppy heads and things like that and ike will secretly be a canadian which will reveal four seasons later you know i don't think that that was their thing i think that it was just you know ease of animation with certain things and the terrence and philip was supposed to be a parody of south park was their idea and you know and so it goes and it completely and it just got out of hand. Uh, we need a tangent alert button, Phil. Work on yeah. that. <laughs> well, you know. Hey, 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 Terrence, guess what's in the news right now? What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, there we go. But, um, <clears throat> no, did we see, did you see Hollywood listens to Charlie Esser? Uh, how many weeks ago was that when you were saying about why don't they introduce Sheldon uh, on the Big Bang Theory? Why don't they introduce Sheldon's brother? Why haven't they introduced him yet? 
We got the news this week. For oh, the yeah. wedding, they're getting the brother. Did you see this? Yeah. Last? No. Oh, you That's don't see who's going to be portraying the brother? Who? Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> Wendy for a whole week, uh, Wendy Williams show while she was gone, and I totally forgot how much I actually love that guy. Um, as long as he doesn't bring his brother along, when he brings no. his brother along, it ruins everything. No offense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, his brother, I think of much more in uh, as the establishment idea of of uh, Sheldon's brother. I think Jerry O'Connell's brother would fit that mold a little better <laughs> as far as being a dumb guy, but um. No, uh, but you, you cut me off before I could say, Lilith, you'll never guess his secret identity. <laughs> and, <laughs> as he slides into her life. And, um, and you know, I just, I just hope that Sheldon will still stand by him. Um, oh. <laughs> now, here's what, here's what I, really, I really want a scene with Will Wheaton and Jerry O'Connell. <gasps> That's where you, you get this to by me joke. That's where you get yeah. this by me joke. I don't, I don't think he's hosting any after TV shows, so we might be able to get Will Wheaton. <laughs> well, you know Will Wheaton's going to be invited to Sheldon's wedding. Wheaton! <laughs> yes. So, I, and so just Wheaton, Wheaton and Jerry O'Connell together again, I think that, that 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 alone is worth the price of admission. That is like Planet Detroit on Krypton. It's like... I was, I was really shocked that he actually proposed to her. Like, I was actually just kind of catching up on Big Bang, what was it, like two weekends ago? And I was watching mm-hmm. this this season, and I was like, well, he proposed to her in a messed up way, but, you know, it's Sheldon. He don't know no better. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's the idea. You know, once a year, man, he has to have it. Yeah. Um, you know. Up to four times. <laughs> You I know, well, hey man, he's he, he's seven <laughs> times <laughs> seven times more than a Vulcan, you know. If you think about it, so it, it's like he is uh, he is all about that. Um, I can't believe Bernadine was pregnant again, too. I was just like, I think that is a. I like how they portrayed the second baby. It's just like, yeah, well, what I, think she, I think that's because she was pregnant in real life. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, well, you know, but uh, as far as Sheldon proposing to Amy, I mean that they, they're, they've been building to that for a while. Ever since she, his like mom told him to keep the ring, you knew that was that was Chekhov's ring, you know. Yeah. You introduce a ring in a story, story someone's going to get proposed to. But you got to remember, I don't, I don't watch Big Bang for years at a time. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, literally, I get the it's like, hey, I wonder what I wonder what Johnny Galecki's up to. Let's go, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Oh, him. speak speaking of nice segue, uh, the Roseanne okay. reboot starts Tuesday. Yep. I, I actually like I've been rewatching Roseanne. Like I said, the early seasons aren't so like when they're like when she's still at, like the factory and it's very you know that blue collar politics kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And now that she's a Trump supporter, I wonder how that's all going to change. Well, I mean, well. It's not and, gonna and, be the sole focus of it, like, cause she she is a little cuckoo, you know. Yeah, but everybody's a little cuckoo. <laughs> well, first off, I don't know how much the fact that she's a Trump supporter is even gonna play into the story, um, you know. And I think that if nothing else, I think that's the kind of thing where, at most, she's making this point that you know, people feel disaffected, blue collar Midwestern life, and you know, all this kind of stuff. I, I think there's an argument to be made. I don't think it's going to be a central focus of, of this story. I think it's actually. Yeah, I just be, don't know what it's going to be. Most, yeah, I, I think at most it's. Well, no, it's going to be, you know, uh, <laughs> it's it's going to be Roseanne and Dan now are both thinner. And man, right. um, he lost uh, a lot of weight. John Good, yeah, John Goodman, I'm wagering had some kind of surgery there. Yeah, which I think he might have had that thing. Yeah, which is good for him, you know. And at a certain point, but he's you know, still an he, ample American, no doubt about it. No, he's still an ample American, but he is—he's not—he's no longer a guy who had to lose weight to play the babe. Um, <laughs> you know, he is definitely—he um, is definitely a more uh, physically fit older man now, which is which. Makes sense because he's aging, and as you age, probably had to be, yeah. Yeah, you 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 either you either die or you get healthier. I just, <laughs> I just can never see past him as Linda Tripp on SNL because, of course, I grew up in the great 
Bill Clinton scandal era where that literally was on TV for like three years. Yeah. <laughs> and that is just burned into my mind every time I see John Goodman. <laughs> Yes. Well, you know, that was that was his reoccurring character. And you know, he was happy to do it. And that was that was that was where we were. You know, that was so long ago. Oh, <laughs> it's seared into oh, my brain. The scandals, Thank the scandals. you, mainstream, lamestream media. <laughs> no, I'm to me it's just like just every time I think back to the past and like what, what constituted a political scandal, I'm like what what a, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a what a who was sitting president cheated on his wife with? Yeah, we're so past that. Well, yeah, when it was a scandal, that was like you know that this was a that this was a constitutional crisis, not <laughs> Tuesday. Now it's Tuesday, you know. <laughs> uh, and Bad tweets like, and we forget. <laughs> not that we even forget. It's just like. You know, it, it, it's here's what I'll say. It's still a scandal. Everything about Trump is still a scandal. It's just that it is wrong. So much of just he's in con, he's in just such a state of constant scandal that what are you gonna do at this point? It's like you have to wait until either either Republicans in Congress just said they don't want to have a nuclear war. Which I actually think John Bolton is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back there. Because if you have a nuclear war, you can't get money from tobacco or oil companies anymore. That's right. And that's one thing all of Congress, regardless of politics, can agree on. Nuclear wars are bad for business. And that's right. When these, you know, and when you have people actually saying, yeah, we can totally preemptively strike North Korea. It's like, oh, goodness, this is not a good day to... <laughs> you want to hear no, yeah not- and, and it's like you know regardless of your politics business is business and business only and that's continues. The, business, the business is basically politics now because i feel well, like they know, should wear nascar jackets with all their sponsors because there, there's a lot way too much money in politics it yeah happen. but you know what every company that pays off a politician is a person that's employing someone thank you very and much that's, that's how you want to look at it well it is it's an aspect of the reality of the world it's like you know Yes, these are industries that are buying politicians, but they're also employing people. It's like if you work for the gun lobby, you actually, or if you actually work for the gun industry, if you either are a gun salesman or a gun manufacturer or just, you know, a guy who sells sandwiches outside the gun shop, you know, there is actually, this, this, this stuff actually affects you in, in a weird way, you know? So I don't, I, I'm not the kind of guy who like sees, Businesses' influence in government as necessarily, and as necessary is is by its nature bad. It often is bad for society because we wind up spending money on stupid things. But we spend money on stupid things anyway. You know, I mean that that's the thing. It's like we. Where's my place to Hawaii? What's up, Bojack? (laughs) Of all the things, I'm like, yes. Why haven't we done this? Hey, they're talking about making a high-speed bullet train from like here to Chicago. I think. Well, bullet happen. trains aren't that are actually a decent. It's like an old concept now. I mean, Japan does it better. We'll never do it as good as Japan. Just deal with it. Actually, no, we could do it better than Japan because Japan's is like forty years old now. So it's it's like if still, we make, <laughs> yeah, it's still a, it's still really good. But uh, but it's like if we built one now, we could use like better technology. You know, it wouldn't be. But, but would we? <laughs> Hey, if I can take a two-hour trip to Chicago so my son can learn at the feet of Molly Southgate, I'm all for it. Well, there we go, man. I would. Well, actually, you can do that right now. You just have to get on a plane. Boo! Planes are gross. <laughs> <laughs> and that, the, the price for a ticket is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. If you want to buy on a decent airline, and unless you have like some yeah, kind of like good. business discount, then you have to like pay for like every bag or something. Yeah, yeah, well, well, it depends on what airline you are. You usually you get you, two free bags. And oh, you get yeah, one you, no one, no one go United. <laughs> you you I, are that, flying. Well, I guess I am know? on a business because I United. That's what our deal is. United well, American. Well, I, I know you didn't take those dogs on that plane. No, my boyfriend drove them. Exactly. <laughs> so he drove to Canada. Why not for, bring his car for you? <laughs> yes, for me. Like, like I said, the truck gets eight miles to the gallon. He had to he had get to his stop every, car. every twenty minutes. 
I don't know. I think he's just looking for it. I, I think he's being I think he's being whiny. I'm gonna say it. I think he's being oh. whiny. I think I think it's like when my kids what like don't want to go to school, school well, and they're like, oh, why do we have to go to school? It's like because you have to. That's you know, we're not having this conversation today. If he wants, if he doesn't want to drive mass transit, get his car. He, he, he has a car. He didn't want to go. He did it all for her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I told him it was going to be a lifestyle adjustment. I was like, you have to learn how to live in a big city, baby, okay? Like, you have to learn how to get around. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying it's what, – what my point is is that he has to pull the Band-Aid off. Because once he gets into it, he likes to say, oh, that's really useful. That's actually good. He's like me, though. He actually hates people, so I, to- I totally get what he's saying. <laughs> I know, but, the, but you don't actually have to talk to people on the subway. Here's the thing. People on the subway don't actually want to talk to you. And well, people are that everybody wants to talk. No, like seriously, I I, I get what he's saying. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, don't I know. usually take the car service to work, but like, and we can, like once it gets better weather, we can walk. And he's gonna well, hate car that too. Service, car services, there was people in car service always want to talk to you. Ugh. Yeah, uh, there's no protection no. in ours either. So you you <laughs> well yeah you you should take a proper taxi like a human being where there there's a nice glass wall. There, yeah, there's you. no Uber or Lyft up here either. So because I guess because they have like go car, so uh, go cars. Anyway. not go cars, but go car. That's the company. Yeah, but what I, what I will say is, you know, if you can take a go train. Nobody wants to talk to you. You can have your newspaper. You can put in your earbuds. You can do whatever you want. You just sit on your go train. You get off at your your stop. Walk into work. Yeah, you gotta teach him proper subway etiquette. He don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, but the thing is, he'll learn. And what I'll say is, once I got into t- when I when I didn't have my car for a while and I was taking the subway, after a while, I was like, oh, I love mass transit. I love getting my coffee at the kiosk. Getting on the train, got popping my podcasts or music or whatever the heck I want to listen to. Listening to myself, yeah. Listening to my own voice talk to me about how smart I am. It's amazing. <laughs> it's wonderful. I was like, oh my goodness, I can just talk to myself. Isn't that amazing? You, you more than need to do a podcast. Hands. How amazingly American of you, Charlie. <laughs> yes, but you know what? Hey, it's. North American people in Canada are no different than me. They're um, really not. <laughs> no, they're not. I, I, guess met I, actually, up. Okay. I met more Americans here than I have Canadians so far, so it's just really weird. <laughs> yeah, we were in Vancouver. That's like you know, that's like LA in Canada. It's just it's like no one's from there. They all move there, you know. Yeah, except for the business owners. The business owners in our neighborhood have been here forever. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty cool. Yes. So yeah. will, will it in like a year's time, are we getting in- invitations? No, stop it. Philip, yeah. Why are you obsessed with her getting married? He moved to a foreign country for her. He wants so to put her what? Away. No, we are perfectly just... happy being permanently engaged. I happen to not yeah. wear my ring unless his family's around. Oh, <laughs> oh you actually are engaged. engaged. Okay. Oh, well, you're engaged. Okay, well, that's fine then. When the family's around, is that what she's like? So, I, just, I don't, I don't really like jewelry or anything like that. That's just yeah. not who I am. But yeah, when it's when we go to like family dinners, the ring comes on, and Ooh. yes, we're still permanently engaged. Yes, yeah. we're living in sin. I, I, Deal with it. I mean, you have children together. <laughs> we have three beautiful fur babies. Yes. <laughs> Let it go, Phil. Let it go. Okay. Yeah. Where's that button? <laughs> you know. um... Everybody will have their own relationships and will work them out as they need to. Yeah, I don't want a legal piece of paper in case I have to That's fine. cut and run. Come up, come up through that library of comic books. You know, you know what? You know what? Tesla. Sometimes you can actually have a happier relationship if you don't feel like you. Yeah, you know, because because some people when 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 you have to have that lawyer involved, you start to feel trapped. If you don't have to have a lawyer involved, you don't feel trapped. Other people, it's the complete opposite. But you know what? You have to find what's right for you. Like I said, my friend Ed and his his girlfriend have been together for like 40 years now. Longer than most marriages. So, you know, you, 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 you call it a day if it works for you. Don't be so judgmental, Phil. I should, okay, I shouldn't say that. No, Phil is just okay, a judgmental. We'll just have party just for Phil where everybody cosplays and there's like a little ulcer. I just want someone to give him a cake. 
<laughs> Phil just wants cake. I want to cosplay and marry somebody. Okay. Come on. You know what? Let, 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 let's run a let's run a thing. Let's run a contest. Get married, have Phil marry you. In a co- you have a cosplay wedding? Phil will marry you. Price cake. <laughs> oh, and he can, he can cake. even dress it. He can even dress as Matt Murdock. Nightwing. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Well, no, but Matt Murdock's a lawyer, which is closer to marrying you than a spy or an acrobat. <laughs> Anyone can get ordained. Just ask Phil Coulson. Yeah. <laughs> or our lovely Rob Southgate. <laughs> Jedi Master in Reverend Rob Southgate. <laughs> did, did Phil Coulson actually get engaged, or was that just like, yeah, I'll say you're married because... We're all on the run. I don't know. Anyway. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think that. I don't think that marriage was in any way legal. I that's, guess a, that's, that. what I, that's what I was going to say. It's like when did he get ordained, man? Yeah, he just he's just marrying them as in his capacity as director of I mean, a non-existent organization. Unless know? he was ordained like pre Iron Man one or something. I don't know. Uh, well, he might have done it in college. You know, a lot of people get ordained in college, but those kind of things you technically have to renew. Mm-hmm. And depending on well, you can do depending, it on the internet like ten seconds now. So. Well, technically, depending on the municipality, I mean, but it you just really kind of have to just declare yourself ordained, and you can be ordained. It all depends on what the local state laws of marriage license issuances are, and those two people are both foreigners anyway, so you know they may not even be legally allowed to get married in that state because they they're not residents. So, for example, in New Jersey, the your marriage license must be issued by the county of residence of the wife. So, wherever your wife lives, that to so or the city of residence. So, my because my wife lived in Montclair, we had to get uh, the because um, her permanent residence was in Montclair. Her, I had to go to Montclair City Hall to get the um, marriage license. In New Jersey, because that's the rule of New Jersey. New Jersey has, and every 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 state and city have their own rules, their own uh, obligations. Just get married in Vegas, Ugh. and Vegas has very lax rules. Where literally, I think you just have to say you're a church and you can marry people. Because Elvis impersonators marry people all the time. I don't think they're legal. The little white, I actually, when I lived in Vegas, that was the first place that I actually went. The little, the little white wedding chapel. It's it's still there. It's still great. They still have. The, well, at the time, this was like almost almost ten years ago now. The pink Cadillac and everything. So yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you can. I mean, people. That that's a big drive business. through and, weddings. All that. And they and they and you can get both legal and non legal weddings. So you can actually go to Vegas and they you can get the wedding and not sign a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And they'll so you know so that that's an option as well um, for people who just want weddings. So and you know what, Phil? If you want a wedding so bad, why don't you marry your wife again? Yay! Renew the vows. Renew, vow. Renew your vows. There you go. <laughs> I, love your vow. I, love, I love that book. But, yeah. Uh, so there you go. You well, if I, you if I do that, are you are you all going to show up if I do that? I will. Yeah. You gotta take a good time. You gotta be summertime. She'll be like, she'll be like, why? <laughs> I can always, I can, I can always. No, Danielle would love that. Are you no. serious? She would love that. <laughs> oh no, she wants to dress up as Mary Jane or not? But <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely come as Miles Morales. <laughs> I thought you were coming from as a second power girl. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it in the Marvel family if you have a Spider-Man thing. <laughs> wow. Tender Ben Miles Morales. Anyway, should we jump anyway, the call? Should we jump the call? Yeah, comic we're, books. Since we're all yeah, comic books. Did we read anything interesting this week, guys? Uh, Thor was good. Mighty Thor seven hundred five. Looks 7-0-5. like the end of the road for Jane Foster. Yeah. Good. Maybe uh, I can finally come back to a Thor book. Oh, well, yeah. Huh? I, I just never could get into that. I just wasn't feeling it. I mean, you know what was weird to me? Back, but, you know. What was weird to me in this book was that they have Heimdall send Jane to the moon, and I thought actually the hammer came to her on Earth. No. I thought they'd previously established that. So, because remember back when it originally happened, they showed like a set shadowy figure on the moon. But my question is, she wasn't wearing like any suit or anything. So how was she? How was she like surviving on the moon long oh, enough to pick up the hammer? It was dropped in the blue area of the moon. Oh, yeah, okay. There's still a blue area of the moon. You know, um, the Inhumans used to live there. 
then the humans took off from there. But this blues, the city's still there, you know. Uetu still lives there. Well, not Uetu anymore, but his wife and kid live there. Um, which was weird that they established that he had a wife and kid. Uh, you know, I can't wait to see little Uetu's son, little 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 Uetu, going going about his business. Um, it was a it was a nice little side thing. But yeah, I mean, there's no. I, yeah, I forgot about the blue area, but there's like nobody, like hardly anyone there now. It's like Detroit <laughs> on the moon. Yeah, well, yeah, well, because the Inhumans moved out, and uh, yeah, you know, like I said, out, but yeah. yeah, I mean, the only people who go there anymore are Blue Marvel and uh, Way Two and his kid, Way Two's wife, I guess, is hanging out there because we have to have a watcher. So I'm guessing Way Two's wife is now the watcher. Huh? They really? Have, I, I, I'm wondering what they've done with as far as watchers since the watcher since the watcher died. So yeah, they haven't really said much about that. Yeah, but yeah, so kind of. I guess they're kind of going to kind of wrap up her whole uh, spoiler alert death next issue. And then there's some kind of, I think there's some kind of one shot. Uh, Mighty Thor, the gates of Valhalla. Okay. Yeah. Well, cause she's going to go to Valhalla. I mean, that's the thing. It, it, it's not like death actually kills anyone in the Marvel universe. Well, did you see Especially what they... that when you're in the Norse, if you hang out with the Norse, cause you just go to Valhalla. It's like you literally walk across the street to another room. Well, did you see? And that's did, what happens when you die. Are you put up on your Avengers cartoon on Disney XD? Did you see what they mm. did with her there? No, no, I actually have not been watching anything uh, on the Disney XD. It was kind of like the end of that Secret, Secret Wars thing because she had picked up Thor's hammer, but they gave her the Thunderstrike uh, mace. Oh, okay. So she's Jane Foster Thunderstrike mace, which they could still do in the comic. Uh-huh. She's not dead yet. <clears throat> Nobody's rocking that Thunderstrike thing. Is well, you know, like, not for nothing. Doctor Strange just brought back to Las Vegas, and and this was the thing. You know, in Damnation, they kill they they kill Johnny Blue. Spoilers, yeah. And then, did you see what else came out this week? What? The preview for uh, Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider number one mm -hmm. that literally takes place two seconds after he is killed. So it, it's like him and Ghost Rider separately in hell, isn't it? Yeah, because they're in hell. So it's like, but but it, immediately it's like, it, it just shows the impermanence of death because of course death is not an end. It, yeah. It's a very, it, it's this transition idea Transition to a different state. <laughs> exactly. It's a transition to a different state. And once you can transition one way, doors swing both ways. Well, they they always try to like play those deaths now as like these big shocking things and it's always like, you know, you know, if the do if it's not Uncle Ben, they're bringing this character back at some point. <laughs> you know, Uncle Ben's going to be a comeback. Just you wait. Even, even if in the ultimate like... universe that he's going to get ripped. No, no, no. He, they did bring him back in an alternate universe. He's actually he he is in the Sparta Girl universe. He because it's this it's the Ben Parker that got bit by this. By but the I mean, spider. no matter how big your sacrifice, they always bring you back. Ask Barry Allen and Jean Grey. Yeah. And... Yeah. Well, you know. Speaking um, of Jean Grey, but not really. Just ask Buffy. Gold was poop. I cannot believe. I don't get this whole storyline. I'm like, why are why did they agree did to go to prison? About the Shredded Man. Who cares we're, about the Shredded Man? Weren't the X Men always outlaws anyway? Why would you agree to go to jail? I don't know. They they saw uh, they saw what's that show? The Gifted do it. So they're like, yeah, let's let's do that. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you're letting your you know if you're going. Yeah, X Men Blue um, is definitely. What are they this going to jail movie. for? Just out of curiosity, did they actually commit a crime or is it just? just well, you're a, just general <laughs> yeah. mutant. Uh, you know, you're oh, a beauty. being a mutant on a sunny day. I get it. Um, you know. It, and then, yeah. and then, they, and then, yeah, because nothing good happened. Because by the end of the issue, Storm gets locked in solitary confinement. You know, small metal, you know, small metal box. That ain't good. She's claustrophobic. Does she like, she even oh, just electrocute herself to death when she's done with it. You know I mean? Well, she has a power dampener. She can't even do that. You can always yeah, overcome a power dampener. Come on, Phil. With yeah, enough fort mental fortitude. Oh, listen, you. Oh, well, you're the one who can lift the bed right over her head. So, I don't know. yeah, and 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 not for nothing. Um. You know, when your powers are electricity based, power dampeners always get shorted out. Yeah. When, when your power uh, is lightning, you know, it's like the tech really isn't that isn't that good. Although, uh, you know, of course, you technically could have spin 
technology, which they actually did create, and now they have to sort of forget about all the time. Um, although I think they go too many inventions to keep track. Of. <laughs> yeah, well, I think they did come up with like a, a workaround with it, where there was like, oh, you know, the body, you know, once your body, you can get immune, immunized to it or something like. That. It, 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 they came up with something in one of the secondary books about it, you know, because because well, originally it was, oh, you had to have the, the spin technology had to be specially keyed to each person. And then someone created one. Someone said, well, what if we just said it works for everybody? And it's like, okay, but now you've just created something that can get rid of everyone's powers. But then again, they already had that when Forge created the gun that took away your mutant powers. But mm -hmm. then they said, well, but then eventually they come back. Because basically... Life finds a way, as Jeff Goldblum. Did you? Did anybody pick up Weapon H? Because I did. I'm not impressed. I'm not going to pick up issue number two. I just, from what I've seen, I will not impress. But yeah, I didn't pick it up. Yeah, but um, yeah, don't. But, but we, that we, just ne ne never struck me as a good idea. First off, anytime they try to manufacture hulks, it's never a good idea. No matter yeah. what company it is, I agree. When you mix your two, well, when you yeah. mix two, when you mix like two properties, like Hulk and Warrior, it's like. Uh, well, not only that, but it's just it's just first off, even even in base Marvel continuity, anytime they create Hulks, it always ends poorly. There's never been a manufactured Hulk that doesn't end poorly, either because it's a bad story or just because the Hulk itself burns itself out and it just it doesn't work as a concept. And then and, and not for nothing, if like superpowers were 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 so this is one of the biggest problems with science-based superpowers is that once you establish, well, why don't we just create, why don't we just make everyone hulks? You know, it, it, it's like once you can recreate the effects, which they do all the time, you know, when the, you, you have this basic problem that, you know, way more than the technology issue is just the fact that why doesn't everyone have superpowers issue? You know, well, it, it cannot necessarily be compatible with everybody, or you know, there's always a loophole. Well, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, you can always create the loopholes, but they seem to ignore those loopholes when it's convenient. And it, you get to this point where it's like, you know, if we could manufacture hulks so easily, why aren't we manufacturing hulks more? You know, which at least back when they had like a, a, an official prohibition on superpowered soldiers, it made sense. Because they actually did have a whole thing in an old X-Men comic where it was like there was a Cold War. It was a gentleman's agreement. It wasn't a, a formal treaty. But by this point, you would have a formal treaty that would said, we agree not to use superpower enhanced soldiers in, because it's going to create an arms race that's going to destroy humanity much faster than bombs because the soldiers will eventually kill us all because we created an army of hulks. And there's no way to control an army of hulks. Marvel just needs some version of the metagene, you know, some excuse. It's like they funny. have it, uh, technically. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you. I mean, you you mean you want like a bang baby thing or, or what? <laughs> like, what? No, I just just like less, why did the super soldier suit or... really work for Steve Rogers? Because he had a metagene. No, actually, yeah, that's they, what they I actually, mean. yeah. There, there actually was um, an interesting idea they put it forth in that which was that essentially it worked for steve rogers not because of anything in steve rogers physiognomy it's just that his that mentally he was just prepared for it yes and it, it's sort of it's sort of the the um robocop explanation in robocop 2 when they explained why murphy didn't kill himself it was because because he was catholic that was basically what it all boiled down to it was he was catholic catholic and, guilt they've done that in the comics i mean back in the 90s when they did the whole thing with like you know when ben rally first figured out he was a clone he was like you know I, why am i here i would kill myself but i was cloned from a guy who considers suicide a mortal sin okay peter parker's catholic I guess a lot of I guess a lot of Christians think. Lap cap, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I always I thought he was Jewish. I, I don't know. Better than the Flash being Jewish. Just <laughs> Justice League. <laughs> Justice League in the Justice League movie. Yeah, this Jewish they boy. Just, they just pulled that out of nowhere. He's Felicity. They pulled that out of nowhere. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's. You know, I would just assume. I always assumed he was Jewish because um, Ben Parker. Uh, looks a lot like um, 
what's his name? Uh, Jack Kirby. And all of the Kirby analogs wind up being Jewish, like Ben Grimm. So I always assumed Ben Parker was Jewish. Wait the ball. But no, we were talking about resurrections and uh, manufacturer superpowers. Anyone read Tales of Suspense 103? Not yet. It's Black on my Widow. list, though. Black Widow's back. Yeah, it's on my list, too. Yeah. You know, you know like, I'm, I'm starting to, like, really have sympathy for Hawkeye, so... I know she's all mad. That he's running three arrows going down War. the tank. I'm just gonna. <gasps> he's got a good arc in Infinity War. They say. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Ronan. I'll see it when it hits Blu-ray. Uh huh. Uh, you're not gonna go live. You're gonna go see Ready Player One, but you're not gonna go see Avengers. I had to go see Pacific Rim Uprising or whatever it was last night. I fell asleep. He was so mad. <laughs> I fell asleep in a deep like dude. I was. Just... It was an awful movie. <laughs> well, the first Pacific Rim didn't do that well. He loved it. I don't know why. Oh, and I love Charlie Hanna, and that's the only reason why I agreed. It was. Oh, I, I guess he likes big robots that fight. So yeah, he. he you know what? Like, he likes that. Too, what's that Rocko, Rock'em Sock'em movie with Jack uh, Hugh, Hugh Jackman. He liked that movie too. So oh, maybe on to something. But that was a good movie. With that, because that that had heart. That was schmaltzy as hell. <laughs> exactly. I am but, not in the schmaltzy. Oh, okay. unless it's Smallville. But it's about a boy who finds the purpose. He connects with his. I was Iron Giant. It was Iron Giant. Did it better. Well, yeah. Plus, isn't the voice of Iron Giant Vin Diesel? So that might be a thing that I need to reevaluate but, as well. Does the kid in Iron Giant have a relationship with his father? Is that a thing? No. No. I don't think okay. So. Yeah, because the whole point of Real Steel is is that he has that relationship with his brother, which is manufactured because this is all based on a short story about robot fighting. Exactly. Which, uh, you know, which was a great in the first Quiet Zone with uh, Lee Marvin, I believe, uh, was the was is the Hugh Jackman character. Oh. Yeah. Um, although in that one, basically, what happens is is that because in the in the actual original story, what what and it's based on a short story. That the each each one is like a completely. It's like they take the title and they just comp, and the idea of robot fighting and then they just completely write a new storyline. But in the Lee Marvin one on Twilight Zone, what it basically is is like Lee Marvin used to be a boxer, like the Hugh Jackman character. But then they outlaw boxing and then he becomes a, a trainer for the robots. But he can't get a decent robot. And what happens in the Lee Marvin story is he he decides he's just going to go go in the ring and get murdered by the robot. Because he'd rather die as a boxer. That, that is an amazing story. I'm just saying. Yeah, because his robot, because basically his robot breaks, and he he's on the hook. He has to put the robot. He has to put something in, so he decides to go in himself as the robot, and he goes and he fights and he gets basically pummeled to death. Because because you know when things John are going to be dark and gritty in a good way. <laughs> Yes, because John Henry dark doesn't and gritty for the sake of being dark and gritty. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but but the, so that's the origin. That's the origin of the story of Real Steel. But then that's a thirty-minute Twilight Zone episode. They have to make it into a four into a two-hour film. So they so put a kid and schmaltziness ensues. <laughs> exactly, and but, uh, you know, did anybody read any DC this week? I did. What did you? read? I read uh, Brave and the Bold number two with that Batman and Wonder Woman. It were was, they brave? Were they bold? They were. It was actually pretty good. I was I was actually shocked that it was actually good. They haven't really been doing Wonder Woman justice in the, in any comic book version lately, so I was actually shocked that it was this good. I like it. I, I don't think that I. I mean, I, I don't. I like the Brave and the Bold franchise or whatever, but for a while it had been very really hit and miss. So I was happy to see this. Um, the artwork was great too. So, um, it was by Liam, and, uh, Liam Sharp. I, I'm not familiar with him at all. I think he's done a couple of backup stories in those like holiday specials or whatever. But yeah, they're they're investigating some some mysticism, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, if you didn't read Super Sons uh, 14, nope, not interested anymore. Sorry. <laughs> for, well, for some reason that escapes me talia is trying to kill lois lane so damien kicks the crap out of talia really uh-huh why is maybe i'll make an animated movie about that 
<laughs> the Batman and Sun franchise hasn't had a um, new movie update, so maybe we can do that. <laughs> and did you and did you give up on Nightwing on this new team? I haven't read it yet. I, I bought it, but I haven't read it. Yet. It's, I mean, it's decent. It's good. I mean, it's no Tim Seeley, but um, it's it's passable. You know, it's 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 pa- I, 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 it's like intriguing, I just intriguing enough. It's it's it, it's strong enough. Now, okay. um, now, Phil, uh, Avengers this week. Oh yes. Uh, with of course Gwenpool as uh, the He's amazing not Voyager. Voyager. <laughs> Gwenpool is Voyager, and you know that because Gwenpool's already betraying the Grandmaster. And you watch, man. It, it's going to be the Don't reveal. Get a quote from Mark Wade, Charlie. <laughs> Did he say it wasn't Gwenpool? Gwen- did he, did he say it wasn't Oh, Gwenpool? no, but don't make me go get that, go hit him up for all. <laughs> you, you, you see if he responds. You see what he says. Okay. Um, no, it's just, it is very clearly that she has no loyalty to the Grandmaster. I mean, she has rewritten her own, she has retconned her own existence to be this. But, you know, clearly Voyager is not playing the Grandmaster's game because she is... You have a character for, that no one has ever heard of that gets first introduced here, rewriting people's memories, and is already betraying the person that ostensibly she is created to 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 serve. No, this is clearly someone who is retconning her own existence, retconned herself into the Avengers, and so why shouldn't we assume she retconned herself to be the Grandmaster's daughter? You watch the Voyager is not who she appears to be. We can only maybe even more than she she thinks so. We can only have one red conning female in the Marvel universe, Charlie. Can't have more than one. Uh, that we have established. No, if there's another one, that's great. If you, if they want to establish another character, but I do think that this is Gwenpool. I'm just saying that it just the, the timing lines up too perfectly. The end of Gwenpool and the uh, appearance of Voyager. The things they show what Gwenpool does in the last book. I'm just saying, and the fact of the matter is, they put the UPC codes on the covers of the comic books when they show Voyager outside of the uh, universe. They're lazy. (laughs) No, it it goes to a whole nother level of lazy. It goes to making a point of showing that she is in... She is outside of the universe. She is in that fictional universe. Now, possible possible that you could say that this character actually did go out into that part of the universe, and maybe it is some other storyline. Maybe this is going to be tied into that new Century series that's coming out. Another character who has that amazing retcon power. Um, and a lot of characters have retcon powers. Let's never forget the Scarlet Witch's power is literally retcon power. She rewrites history to make whatever thing that's going to happen, happen. But I get the feeling just, just by the fact that Jarvis is the one who's, who could see through the issue that Jarvis gets taken out of commission. There's a lot of stuff that's very tropey about it that gets excused because it's Gwenpool. Basically, I think it's either Gwenpool or it's just bad writing. So, <laughs> that's my take on it. And, and I think that we if you're if you're a Gwenpool is Voyager fan like I am, um, you get you get more in this issue it, with just the way that she's interacting with her father, the Grand Master. You know, you watch, you watch, you let it play out, Phil. You let it play out. Um, and of course, we get you know the, our first the first meeting of the Immortal Hulk. The Hulk's back. Love. The Hulk's back. And Vision's dead. Again. Oh, I was gonna say again. <laughs> yeah, again, again. Yeah, basically you know tear, they come up. The Hulk basically tears through everybody until the last page. Who's who's looks like who's gonna throw down with them? Maybe like, even though he's a pacifist now. Well, no. Well, he actually isn't throwing down with them. He's uh, well, I know. He's, he's just like, he's, hey, can we talk? To talk? Yeah. A verbal throwdown. Being that no one had tried with the Hulk. Wonder Man. Oh, really? And not for yeah. And, and not for nothing. That's such a squirrel girl way to approach it. Um, or a way how Gwenpool well no how Gwenpool wouldn't approach it because Gwenpool isn't going to talk but the fact that you're going to go outside of that box 
and have someone just sit down and talk to the Hulk for a minute. Because that always works. Well, you know what? It could in this situation because Play it's... Play some it's, music. I hear it soothes the savage beast. <laughs> it's someone who the Hulk can't really fight because if, if you don't engage with the Hulk, how do you... How does the Hulk deal with you? You know, if you're not going to be a target for the Hulk, what do you do? It's like if, so for example, if the vision just stayed intangible, um, you know, the Hulk might not have been able to, to, to uh, defeat him because, you know, although, though we got in this at the end of that fight, we got the fact that it's the Hulk isn't mindless because the Hulk goes hmm, mindless. Mm-hmm. Because the vision was approaching it, thinking that the Hulk was mindless, and actually, no, it's not. The Hulk, just because the Hulk's not talking, doesn't mean he's mindless. And with Simon engaging him, it's going to make this point. Because if nothing else, Simon's going to make the point to him. So, so what? You work for these guys now? You're somebody's pawn on a board? Is that what you? Is it your chess piece? Is that what's happening? And you know, the Hulk ain't going to be caught into that. So just the fact that you talk the Hulk out of something totally speaks of it being a Gwenpool issue. I'm telling you, man, it's all there. It's all implied. It's all it's all in the subtext. You watch what happens. Subtext, aka smut. <laughs> Sorry. <What>? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, when you're like a slash, when you're a slash shipper, it's all subtext, which means smut. Just sorry. Yeah. All right. Does, it, does anyone have anything else? Oh, are you gonna plug your thing you're doing next weekend? Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna. I uh, actually have like two different plugs. Yeah, I was gonna do that at the end. That's why. Uh, should I do that now? Shameless plugs. Let them know where they can find us. <laughs> no, well next, well next Saturday I'll uh, be at the Rivertown uh, Comic and uh, Toy Show. Uh, you get to see me wandering around trying to. Uh, talk to vendors and whatever else and probably looking for comics so uh come check me out and also uh check out the uh into the night the moon night podcast uh in a few episodes you're gonna hear a guest narrator so they've given us shout outs before which is pretty cool because they're like based in australia so very cool Okay. What um? Oh yeah. And if anyone has any thoughts on Ready Player One, because we're gonna re- are we gonna review it next uh, Saturday night? Correct. Yes. Anybody else is gonna go see it? Did... Charlie, are you gonna go see it? Um, I mean, I I, I theoretically could. Um, so <laughs> don't worry, you pretty little head about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I have no idea what this film is about. I have no idea what a Ready Player One is. Um. Oh, 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 like, did you like gaming in the eight. Did you like living in the eighties and playing games in the eight, like you know, video games in the eighties? It's basically set in Pac-Man, a virtual yes, world. I enjoy it's set in a virtual much, world. And, There's gonna be a lot of eighties references and yeah. a lot of pop culture references. Yeah. Okay, so so it's a Pepsi commercial. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So okay. By, by directed by Spielberg, yes. <laughs> so Spielberg directed a Pepsi commercial. Okay, yeah. I mean, I got that. There's like '80s stuff in there, which is I again one of these things. Like, why is something set in the future so obsessed with the '80s? Because the guy who because created the, this the, thing yeah. was, was grew up in the '80s. Yeah. Yeah, but created what thing? Created the virtual, the, 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 virtual the, world. Virtual world. Virtual world. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's, it's not like, it's in the not too distant. It, it, it's like if like Bill Gates or somebody created like a virtual yeah, but, reality everyone but could use. Isn't it supposed to be like the people in it are creating it? And then wouldn't they like have just as much interest in the 40s as they would in the 80s? No, it's like a yeah, technically the thing revolves around an Easter egg hunt by the creator and his whole thing is 80s stuff. So okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess so. Okay. Uh, if you want to, really, you're welcome. You're really yeah. selling this, this film is all I got to say. Yeah, we're not um, doing it justice, man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so if any yeah. and if anyone sees it and wants to send their thoughts, email us or voicemail us. We're going, Saturday what, eight, night. seven or eight? Are you going to uh, back in time? I don't know. What do we want to do, seven or eight? <laughs> it's up to you. Eight, just in case, because that, doesn't that thing end at like six or whatever? 
Yeah, but I don't, I don't know. know how, how I, I don't know if I'm gonna be there till the end. But yeah, let's say eight o'clock Eastern. <laughs> oh, any. The easiest way is if people just subscribe to our YouTube and I uh, subscribe. Smash to that, that so bell. It'll tell you when we're uh, live. Give you a thirty minute warning, even. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. All right. So yeah, and if you want to email us your thoughts, uh, keep some lunatics at gmail dot com. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter at Capes Lunatics, and check out our Capes and Lunatics sidekicks uh, for Wade's World, Newcastle Crew, uh, who podcast The Watchmen, and the new Quantum Zone, the Quasar podcast with me, and the new, with me and new guys, Will and Matt. So, yeah, yeah Charlie, you listen to that, because we talked about some old school Marvel stuff. Ooh, Will, Will, is at, Will is actually a college professor. Oh, uh -oh. An actual professor. Uh -oh. Yes, yes. He's he said he's, he's, he's like an English major, but he's teaching a class on comics like this semester. Okay. Oh, so he has a meeting that's honorific. Okay, good for him too. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I took the name because it's a meeting that's honorific. You don't have to actually have any bona fides to be a professor. You just have to teach a class. At that's Charlie, why, at Charlie that's what you do well, it's true. <laughs> and you know what? If he if he's an English major, he will say, "Yeah, that's actually true." <laughs> really, just it is a meaningless honorific, unlike a doctor, which actually you have to be. Or, although a doctorate can be relatively meaningless because you just have to have an institution call you a doctor to actually have a doctorate. Whether or not it's accredited or not, you actually can still call yourself a doctor. Although obviously people will will say that only an accredited institution can really give you a doctorate, but you can have an honorary doctorate, which likewise is completely meaningless. So if I ever get my honorary doctorate, I could I could branch into supervillainy as a doctor, but for right now my supervillainy is 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 merely a professorship. So, so, so Charlie, if people want to be uh, insulted by you personally, where can they get a hold of you online? Well, you can always write to me in that old-fashioned email way. There are Maz and Paz once did at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And, of course, follow me on the Twitters the way the hip young kids do nowadays. At Charlie Esser, that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle for quality. Watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. couldn't live tweet it like last night because my wife wanted her feet rubbed, so. What you a have good to husband. Make your choices. Yeah, well, that's that's what I get paid the big bucks for. And Lilith, if uh, people want to uh, recommend the uh, escape route from Canada, how can they get a hold of you? Um, you guys can uh, find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire, live tweeting Black Lightning and Legends for like its next two episodes, I guess. I'm going to try to be home and do the live stream thing. Uh, Maybe learn some little nuggets about the Legends uh, fandom. And for everything else, at Adventures in FG, that's Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram, at Adventures in FG. And also, be sure to send in uh, your birthday wishes. Phil's birthday is April 1st, Sunday. So, at Nightwing PDP, wish him a happy birthday, or even better, rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play as a birthday present. Cash works. <laughs> Cash works, too. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you know what time it is. Time to say goodbye. All right. Remember, play Ready Player One next week. Send your thoughts in. Jesse Jackson, we're looking at you. All right. Uh, for another week, this has been The Capes. Ampersand. Lunatics. I forgot my line there for a moment. What? I forgot that I was supposed to say ampersand. I, forgot. Forgot. <laughs> I, I totally forgot. Say ampersand or and. I just never know. It keeps Cape, and you hear Charlie say line. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, oh, wait, we're doing that again. Okay, I forgot. I'm not a... Hey, my thing. Let me see here. Can I get... <laughs> no, the, I, like, hit the button to, like, put on the toolbox, like, this, like at the start of it, and it's, like, and it just came up. So I wanted to see if we could actually work here. Get it together, Google. <laughs> nope, still no, still none, still no bar. <laughs>